Yo, what's going on guys? It is JD here back with another episode of the No Money Spent Road to Glory and have we got a lot to get through today. So last night uh, 2k added all of these spotlight sim players to the database and that just took the My Team community by shock and sent everyone into a bit of a frenzy and then today they have released the challenges and of course the uh, end goal, the end reward is a Galaxy Opal James Harden. The two pink diamonds you get along the way are Pascal Siakam and Brandon Ingram, and you get 30 diamond cards along the way as well, which is pretty mad. So we're going to take a look at those sets and um, challenges today. We're going to have a look at the ones that I think are the best in terms of actually getting through the chat one set of challenges just for one card. Uh, and then also, I've already sold off a lot of cards from yesterday. So yesterday we went ahead and sold off, uh, I said that we were going to go through one per day, selling off the heat check cards and heat check selections. Yesterday we did the 76s, so sold quite a few of those. And I also went through and sold off my Moments of the Week 9 cards. So that is the Moments of the Week that had the Diamond, diamond Jalen Brown in it. He was, of course, in a locker code, so his price went way down, which meant the rest of the players went way up. So we cashed in and got a really good price and time on those. And I've heard Series 2 players are very, very expensive right now. So we might be cashing out uh, and uh, making quite a bit of profit on these players if I don't want to go uh, into these challenges, which we'll talk about in a bit. So let's jump into this. We've got a lot to get through today. And today will be another double upload, of course. I'm going to hit you guys later on with a Galaxy Opal evo Ben Simmons. So um, I think I'm very close at the moment. We'll have a look in a second. But there, that's going to be the second video of the day. So you're not going to want to miss that one at all. It's a limited time event. 200 MT for every triple threat online win. It's nothing great. Uh, I'd say you can probably get a bonus like three to 4,000 MT in a two-hour slot. It's nothing great. And that is, of course, if you win pretty much every game. We've got one domination, one triple threat, and uh, another triple threat as well. Again, for not much MT. So nothing crazy going on just there. We've, of course, got another win yesterday with the Galaxy Opal Kareem. If you missed that game, you really need to go ahead and check it out because that went to overtime and we won it literally in the last five seconds of overtime. And it was Kareem grabbing an offensive rebound that uh, basically won us that game. So he was massive for us. Now, the spotlights are just down there. So we'll come back to them in a quick second because... We've come down to the auction house, like I said, we've got quite a bit to cash in on. So, uh, first of all, we've got these heat check cards, which we sold off yesterday. Uh, massive thigh ball weight, uh, Al Horford was uh, one of them. And then we've got these guys from the moments of the week set. So, Frank Kaminsky III was a Sapphire, sold for 6.8. Bielitsa was a Ruby, 4.2. Aaron Gordon, Rui Hachimura, both Ruby cards, selling for a lot. Davis Bertans was an Amethyst, and so was Jaron Jackson Jr. So, got really, really good prices on them. Then we go back to the heat check set for the 76ers. MB going for nearly 5k. Shake Milton right there. And then we've got Shea Gilgis Alexander selling for 30k. Now this one, this one did have a diamond three point shoe on it, which is why it sold for a little bit more than a standard one would, but still 30k for him. Very nice indeed. Lonnie Walker from the moments of the week. And then Pat Connaughton uh, was a duplicate, I think. So that puts us at 300k. And uh, yeah, let me tell you guys if you do have any cards from this week right here, so I've still got one more Jaron Jackson here. And that's because when I first looked at his price, there was one where well, the cheapest price was 16k, as you saw, because I sold one for 16k. And there was one up for 8k. And I thought, you know what, that's probably a snipe. I picked that up. Uh, and I only managed to sell one of them, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but as you can see, there's only five up on the auction house. So chances are he is going to stay pretty expensive. Uh, but yeah, Davis Bertans managed to get 10k for him. So if you've got any of these cards, Mopes Week 7, I think I said 9 earlier. I did mean 7. I uh, want to go ahead and uh, get them sold as quickly as you can. Uh, Shea Gill just was down here, Moments Week 10. Like I said, I got 29k for him. He sells usually for about 20k, so not too bad. Pretty happy with a bit of profit on him. And then, yeah, we went through the uh, heat check set for the 76ers. A couple of them didn't sell, uh, so a couple of them are just around that 3k mark. And like I said yesterday, I don't really want to sell them unless I'm getting more than 3k of them. So Zare Smith, we can get 3.9k for him, which is very nice. And this just shows how quickly and how often the heat check market fluctuates. It's ridiculous. There's no James Ennis up for a buy now. There's no Raul Neto up um, for a buy now either, I think, if I just remembered that correctly. Uh, yeah, there's not. So we're going to put these guys up because we'll be the only one with a buy now. So if someone wants to buy them, they're going to have to buy ours. Uh, Korkmaz coming up next. He is up at like 5k. What is this? Oh, the price is just so crazy. Uh, is this because of the NBA series, uh, the Spotlight Sim sets? Do heat check cards count? I think they probably do, actually, judging by the fact that uh, so many of these have been bought up. I think maybe that uh, these heat check cards actually count. Okay, so I'll put all of them to the auction house, and I'm just going to put them all up for 4.9k. If I can get 5k per player, I am making double my money. So I would have bought them for like 2k, uh, so we're easily making a lot of profit. Uh, and if they do sell for that, then that is fantastic. And if that shows that the rest of the sets are going to be like that as well, then we are in to make a unfathomable, unfathomable, wow, English words, 
a ridiculously high amount of uh, MT. Let's go with that word, shall we? Because, uh, yeah, apparently someone said in the comments that the NBA Series 2 sets have gone up in price massively. Uh, and, yeah, apparently it's happened to the heat checks as well. So I'll get these guys put up and then we will go and have a look at these new challenges. Okay, so that is all of them up for sale. We'll see how many of them sell uh, and if any of them sell reasonably quickly. But anyway, let's come down here to the new Spotlight Challenges. So we've got 30 of these. We have got 150 challenges to get through, uh, which is obviously a ridiculously high amount. Uh, before we jump into the actual games themselves, I'm just going to hit you with some numbers. So in terms of the rewards you get for actually playing the games uh, just on their own, so obviously you get some MT and you get tokens, if you tally up all 30 games, you're going to be coming out with 76,500 MT and 180 tokens. And of course, you are going to be getting MT from completing the games as well. So we can probably add on, I don't know, probably 100k-ish, maybe something like that. Uh, so I'm going to say you probably make about 150, you're going to be making over 150k MT from doing all of these sets. And like I said, 180 tokens as well. And then of course you're going to be getting 30 diamond cards, two pink diamonds, and at the very, very end of it, you're going to be getting a galaxy opal. So if we look at this, so three players from the 76ers on your team. So I think the heat check cards probably will count to be fair. Uh, so it's going to be any heat check card, any reward card, any NBA series two or series one cards. So there's plenty of options. First one is on rookie. And I know this last one is on hall of fame difficulty, and that is five minute quarters. So that is a full game. And the final challenge is you have to use 10 players from each team. So you're going to need at least 10 players from every single club uh, to actually get through these. Now, of course, for me, that's not a problem in the slightest because we've locked in Series 1, so we're going to have at least 10 on every other card. Let's come down here and let's have a little look-see at the prices of uh, these cards. So they're up for like 4.5k. Really? Wow, okay. I bought these cards for 1,000 MT. Wow, okay, so I think I'm just going to have to start mass posting things uh, at like four and a half ish thousand MT, try and get that amount for them. Because, uh, yeah, I think we can make some big, big profit. Now, obviously, we can sell all them, make loads of profit, and still do these challenges, which is the best part about it. A couple of these cards aren't great. A lot of them are very, very similar, but a couple of them really do stand out. Uh, there's one card that really stood out to me when I was looking at the stats, and it is Cam Reddish. And I think this is going to be the first challenge that I actually try and complete myself. So he's basically like Tracy McGrady. He's six for eight, shooting guard a small four position. Incredible stats, Hall of Fame clamps, range extender, quick first step, things like that. Uh, and actually, speaking of the badges, the majority of these cards, the diamond cards, come with between 16 and 19 Hall of Fame badges. So still come pretty damn stacked. And like I said, most of them have 90s for the stats pretty much everywhere. Brandon Clark's a very nice card as well. Duncan Robinson isn't bad at all. Uh, Mitchell Robertson's a fantastic defensive player. Terence Ross would be insane, but he doesn't have clamps, which absolutely sucks. Uh, who else have we got down here? Did anyone else? Malcolm Brogdon's very good. Jackson Hayes as well, a very, very good card. Uh, and we have a look down here. Any of these other names strike out to me? Rui Hachimura as well, a very, very good card. So, like I said, when you complete all 30 of them, all 150 uh, challenges, which yeah, I'm going to say it's going to take you around 60 to 70 hours of playing. So... By all means, don't think this is going to be easy. Don't think everyone's going to be running around with these pink diamonds or, uh, of course, with Galaxy Opal Harden. If someone has Galaxy Opal Harden, just know they have put in the absolute work and they have grinded hard. So it is a free Galaxy Opal if you want to look at it that way. But uh, if you think time isn't free, which is definitely not, then it's not quite free. But yeah, 60 to 70 hours, I'm going to say, for 150 challenges because the early ones aren't full games. They are just like a couple of minutes per quarter. But the final games on Hall of Fame, they are going to be long. But yeah, like I said, when you lock in these ones, you're going to get a 98-rated Spicy P, and then this one you're going to get a 98-rated Brandon Ingram. Both these cards come in with between 25 and 30 Hall of Fame badges, I believe. Uh, and both of them do have really, really nice stats. And then, of course, when you get all 30 teams done, uh, you're going to get a Galaxy Opal James Harden. Now, he is unbelievable, as you might expect. Uh, he's even got Hall of Fame clamps. I mean, when you give Harden Hall of Fame clamps, that's when you know uh, it is game over. So for me, uh, thinking about whether I want to actually complete these sets or not, I mean, it will be cool to get another free Galaxy Opal, so chances are I will start playing through these games. Uh, in terms of the other cards to add into my squad, Cam Reddish, like I said, he's just a, a class above, so he might knock out uh, RJ Barrett out of the squad. But even if we get James Harden, I mean, he'd have to come in at the backup too. So any card that we get, like a Cam Reddish, would then go straight back out of the squad. Or, or come down here, of course, and uh, make this back to a 13-man rotation, which we'll, of course, uh, do. We did, of course, pick up KD. Haven't done a gameplay on him yet, but I will be doing that over the next couple of days. Obviously, the content today has just thrown everyone off. So all planned videos are pretty much out of the window. Um, but yeah, 
I don't know where would we fit a Galaxy Opal Hardened or the two pink diamonds we're get, going to get as well. But I definitely think the best move is to go ahead uh, and get them done and make a start on them. So the first one sold to Tobias Harris for basically 5k. So we're going to be making 5k per card. And uh, yeah, let me tell you, I paid... Uh, actually, what's it, what's it done to the gold cards prices? Even the gold cards have gone up to like 4k. I paid 700 MT for these cards. Are you kidding me? Wow. Eric Bledsoe up at like 8k. Oh yeah, I guess the um, high rated cards will sell for a little bit more, maybe. Uh, who do we have as an Amethyst? We do have Joel Embiid as an Amethyst. 95k is probably a little bit ambitious there, my guy. I uh, don't think you're going to be getting that for him. Um, but whatever he's gone up to, again, I paid 1,000 MD for this card. So it just goes to show that picking up cards when they are at their lowest price, when nobody else is buying them, is the best time to do it. Because you never know when something like this is going to happen. It just comes completely out of the blue. Uh, and actually, something that uh, Steve said to me in the, the DM, so shout out to you, my guy, Steve. Uh, the Nets Playbook was down at like 2k the other day now it is up at like tw uh, no actually it's not that bad it's still like 10k uh, but yeah of course this playbook has the infamous quick through scs play which just makes all offline play so much easier um and of course everyone now needs to play offline so everyone is now going to be trying to get through those games so yeah it's definitely going to make our ch uh, squad change a little bit over the coming days like i said cam reddish is probably the only player that's actually going to get into this squad even the pink diamonds, I'm not sure, are going to be good enough to knock out either Michael Beasley, Jonathan Isaac, Giannis, or Galaxy Opal Josh Smith. I know they're not going to lock out uh, Galaxy Opal Josh Smith. And, of course, that is without uh, me forgetting, or that's with me forgetting, that we've got a, a small guy named Galaxy Opal KD to add into the squad. So, yeah, they'd have to knock out either Isaac, Giannis, Josh Smith, or KD, or Michael Beasley at that 13th man or 12th man spot. So, yeah, it's awesome that 2K have actually released so much content, like... 60 hours of content that is a lot and obviously a lot of people are on quarantine or they're self-isolating self-distancing whatever you want to call it so it is i mean it is the perfect move for them to do this and it really is going to get a lot more people playing the game in terms of evo so of course all these offline challenges are going to be great for evoing up cards so if you have any uh, high rated cards that uh, obviously need a lot of evoing someone like this uh, uh jason kid not that i'd recommend them doing them at this point but if you've got them and you really want to get them done Obviously, this is the time to do them, but we do have our Galaxy Opal Ben Simmons. And like I said, second video of the day, he is going to be done. We're at 473s at the moment, uh, and then he is going to be done. And that is going to be very, very exciting. So I'll probably actually go into this first game. Uh, and like I said, I will make a start on the Cam Reddish ones first. So yeah, the first, the first one is on rookie difficulty. Three minute quarters. That's going to be so, so easy and absolutely perfect for evoing up cards. Out of memory, who is the best card to uh, evo up for profit? Is it still the Mark of Soul card? So the Pink Diamond one is still selling for, I don't know, it's like 80k. That's not bad. And you consider that the Diamond card you can pick up for, well, you used to be able to pick him up for 20k. Uh, is he really over that? Because if he's a little bit over that, then I don't think it is going to be worth it. Uh, let's keep scrolling along down here. 27k. So 26k, I believe, is the cheapest we've seen so far. That is very surprising. Just for a Diamond Mark of Soul, 25k? Why are people paying that? So you can you can make oh, there's 21k there, 20k, okay, not bad. So if we sell them off for 75k after taxes, you're making about 50k profit. It's not bad, to be fair, um, and it will make these challenges a little bit easier. So hello, there we go. Let's go ahead and uh, pick him up, and we will add him and start him off evoing. Of course, we've done him once before. We evoed him up uh, and sold him for like 80k before, uh, but now it is going to be back to. 1600 points 600 boards 40 block shots 53s and 60 games so that will just come naturally and we might as well make some profit whilst doing these challenges so i would definitely recommend you guys to do something very very similar so that is us of course adding in mark soul so let's just take a quick look at our investments of course we've got shack and uh thon maker if they are starting to get to a price where i'm going to be happy with them i'll probably just get rid of them to be fair uh because we're going to have to keep that auction house very, very open because we're going to be getting through literally all of our heat check cards. I think now is the time to sell them. And same situation with those uh, current Series 2 sets as well. So Shaq is just shy of 4K, which isn't bad. I'll probably start listing a couple of them up for 4K and see if I can get a couple of lazy buyers. And then Thornmaker, not expecting his price to have changed too much, to be fair. Probably just over 2.5K, not even, down at 2K. Wow, so definitely going to have to be waiting a little bit longer on him. So, yeah, guys, really, really exciting today. Like I said, there's plenty of rewards that are very, very worth it. There's not many cards that aren't usable, realistically. And the fact that you can get a Galaxy Opal at the end of it really, really does make it worth it. Obviously, you've got to weigh out whether or not it's worth it for your account. It is 60 hours, 70 hours, something like that. It's, it's a lot of hours to put into this game for a card. But 
Uh, he's going to be a very, very good card. It's better than this brand of Roy, because uh, he's got, well, I don't know if it's better than this brand of Roy, but it's obviously going to have like 15 extra Hall of Fame badges, um, because I imagine that Harden has close to 40, uh, which is the current standard that they're locking these, uh, or knocking these cards out with. But yeah, the score's going to change a lot over the next couple of days. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are going to be able to get into those challenges. If you don't have any of the cards, then it might get a little bit pricey. But don't forget, uh, you can even use cards from the reward market down here. I mean, these cards will count uh, for the clubs, which is great. So if you do have a couple of tokens laying around, get those emerald cards. That's going to be a little bit. Any card from here is going to count, like free agent cards, they'll count as well. Uh, anything for the primes, they'll all count towards uh, using the players. And even the domination ones, if you've done normal domination, you're going to have a card from each car, each team anyway. So plenty of options out there if you guys can't afford to buy them from the auction house, because like I said, chances are they are going to get price fixed and they are going to go very, very expensive. So let's get into some comments for now. We're going to split out the comments again because uh, there's just so many of them. You guys are now actually kidding it lately. We're over 9,500 subs. We hit 9,000 on Saturday. So we're getting 500 subs in a week. Which is mad. So 10k is coming up very, very quickly, which is very, very exciting. So yeah, going to split up the comments, half in this video and half in the second one, when we Evo up that Ben Simmons. So let's jump into it. First up, James. Should I sell Opal Bird? I got him for 50k. I was thinking his price might go up because Curry and Kareem's did. Also love the content. So thank you very much, James. If you got him for 50k, you got a very, very good snipe, my friend. Uh, he's at 330k at the moment. Steph Curry is coming in at 250k. To be fair, if he's selling for around 350k, which it kind of looks like he is, if you put a diamond contract on him, you probably get uh, 350. I think anything over like 325, it's a very, very good price to get uh, for this card because obviously these ones, Buzz Vita sets, they don't lock in for collections. Kareem got so expensive just because he's so rare. There's hardly any, any of him out here on the auction house, and he is still the best center in the game by far. Larry Bird has a lot of competition at his position. You've got Josh Smith, you've got KD, you've even got some of the pink diamonds, obviously, that they're just releasing. Michael Beasley, the two that have just come out in the rewards. So a lot of competition at his position. So if you get him over 300k, I'd definitely say that is a W. Next up, two questions about investing. Lil Hubbard and Will, who should I be investing in right now and who should I invest in for 100k? Uh, so, Thonmaker and, uh, well, probably not Shaq anymore to be fair because his price has gone up a bit, but Thonmaker I still think is a very good investment. If you can get in front of 2k, I'd definitely go for it. And then Amethyst Paul Pierce, Diamond Paul Pierce, Diamond Jalen Brown, Diamond Marcus Smart, all the cards that came out in the locker code a couple of days ago are still going to be a lot cheaper and will definitely go back up in price. Next up, Pepega says, Hey JD, I was wondering if I should invest into Pink Diamond Iggy because he seems too good for his price. Do you think his price will go up when the uh, Ben Simmons packs go out of the store? So let's have a look. I think someone asked me about this a couple of days ago. So I'll be interested to see what his price has gone to just now. I think he was up at like 50k a couple of days ago. And now he is under 40, well not under 40, but under 50 significantly, at 45k, so it looks like he's pretty much bang on 40k. He is a fantastic card, but again, I think with the amount of free cards that the 2k have just dropped, he probably will go up to 50k. I mean, it is still a pink diamond card with 30 Hall of Fame badges, like it is still a ridiculously good card. When he goes out of packs, I can definitely see him going up to 50k, maybe even 60k. So if you're getting for like 35-ish k, 30k, I think that is a very, 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 very safe investment. If you can get for 40k, a little bit more risky, but you're still likely to make quite a bit of profit. NKJ, NKG, sorry, says JD is a good investment. Marcus Mark for 6k. Yes, he definitely is. Tristan says, what's a point guard for 100k? Pink Diamond and Russell Westbrook, I think, is the best you can get for that price. Grayson says, I currently have 330 tokens. What should I do to get more tokens fast? What collections are good to do for cheap? What Opal should I get? I'm leaning towards Levine because his Amethyst is very, very good. Depending on the position you need, I would say either Levine or Josh Smith because they are very, very, very good. Um, but sadly now, I don't think I can recommend any sets to lock in. Let's have a look at the Legacy sets, actually, because they might not... Okay, so I think the Legacy sets are now going to be your best bet. If you'd have asked me this yesterday, the NBA Current Series 2 cards were the best to lock in by far, but now, definitely not, because uh, as we are seeing, their prices have gone up, and we've sold three more cards already. Um, so, I'll tell you what, guys, by the second episode, I'm going to have a lot of these cards listed up. Before I get into that first game of the challenge to get that Ben Simmons done, I'm going to fill up my auctions with as many cards as I can. So we'll get Jason Tatum back to the collection so that frees up another slot. Uh, Laura Ligurne thought, you know what, we bought him on that, or we didn't buy him. We got him for that locker code that everybody else got. So chances are he's going to be very cheap. Phil Schneer can go back to the collection. And then these guys are all duplicates, so I can't do anything with them. But that still leaves us with probably about 40 slots to add in. So we're going to get at least 40 cards sold by the second episode of the day, which is going to be a lot of MT to cash in for. All right, next up, Wee says, I bought Chris Stapps and D-Wade together for 280k as investments. I also run D-Wade as my starter and KP as my backup. When should I sell them? You should sell them when they release the mystery player, which should be 
Uh, would it be this Friday or next Friday? In the next couple of weeks, you're going to release without mystery players, and that should make their prices go up. Fortnite Best Worst says, is Ruby Thon Maker a good investment? For under uh, under 2k, I would say it is. Prison Mike, is Domination worth doing if I really want tokens, or is it not worth the time? So if you are looking at Domination, the only one that's really worth it for tokens is All-Timer Domination. If you haven't done any of them, then I wouldn't say it's worth it. If you've done a little bit of uh, either of these two, I'd definitely say just get the 33 stars that you need to unlock all time and then get going on all time. Because something like this final game, you get like, uh, what is that, 36? You get 39 tokens for one game. That's not bad realistically. And you're getting like, uh, again, quick maths, 27 tokens for these two games as well. So you're getting 100 tokens basically for three games when you get to the end of it. So it's definitely worth it if you are really, really looking for tokens. Brendan says, should I sell my Galaxy Opal KD? I would say no. I think he's such a good card. Uh, and like I said, he is going to go up in price, in my opinion, when they release that mystery player. So definitely keep hold of him for the time being. Brendan says, I invested in some of the Diamond Market Smarts and Jalen Browns from the locker code for about 3k each on bid. Good idea or a bad idea? Definitely a very, very good idea. Next up, Alex says, what's a good center from the Spotlight Sim set? So off the top of my head, and I haven't gone into in, too in depth about these cards just yet, but uh, JaVale McGee looks very nice. Mitchell Robertson as a defensive presence looks incredible. Jackson Hayes looks very good as well. Brandon Clark as well, I think. Uh, Rui Hachimura, no, he's power forward. But yeah, a couple of those guys are very good. But like I said, pretty much every card from those Sim sets are so, so good. It is a madness. Next up, Kyron says, I bought Galaxy Opal T-Mac out of a locker code pack. Should I sell him? I only have 80k MT and my team is arse. Definitely sell him. You can get like five, six hundred k for that guy. And then you can basically go ahead and buy a full team of like pink diamonds. So definitely, definitely go ahead and get him sold. Lil Hubbard, do you think Bran Roy is still useful? Or should I just wait to grind the Sim set? It depends how far you are through these spotlight challenges, to be fair. Obviously, you are going to be getting the uh, Pink Diamond Yannis along the way, who is still a very usable card, even at this stage of the game. The other four, not so much. Uh, but yeah, I would say if you've done a couple of them, it's definitely worth it, because Brandon Roy, even at this point in the game, is fantastic. He's still my starting shooting guard, and he's still a lot of fun to use. Next up, Big Johnny says, Paul, Galaxy Opal Kyrie, what should I do with him? I think for the time being, you should probably hold on to him. At the moment, he is about 200k. Let me just double check his price real quick. That's 225k. I can see when he comes out of packs, him going up to about 250, maybe a little bit higher than 250, to be fair. Uh, it's a very similar situation to what happened with Steph, and they're very similar players. So hold on to him for the time being. Jane says, who should I get for 140k MT? Uh, I would say go for Pink Diamond, Rudy Gay, and Diamond Bam Adebayo. I think those two players can really transform your squad big time. Next up, Anson says, Hi, Jeddy. Pink Diamond, Pink, Pink Diamond Point Card Giannis looks limited on the auction house all of a sudden. Should I take this opportunity to sell? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, there are, yeah, there's really not many up here, is there? Wow, so I imagine that one is going to sell for over 500k. Yeah, definitely. Go ahead and get him sold because if you can get over 500k for him, I think that is a big, big W. Jake says, I bought 75 thons. Is that good or too much? Uh, if you bought them all for under 2k, that's good. It's a very, very heavy investment, 75 of them. But um, yeah, why not? If you think it's good, then uh, go for it. And then we've got two comments, Fortnite Trollers and Double Buckets, both asking again about investments. So I've already obviously listed off quite a few. So go back into the video and just jot down what I said. Next up, Jordan Plays. Is it still worth it to do the... Uh, go Next up, Jordan Plays says, is it still worth it to go for the spotlight? Giannis, and also, is Pink Diamond Gary Payton in the token spotlight Kareem Pax? Uh, yeah, he should be, because uh, I think those uh, Kareem Pax are in there. He is very expensive, though, isn't he? Last time I checked, yeah, he's 160k. That's a madness. Uh, so, I'd probably say it's not worth Well, I don't know. You're going to lose money on tax, but you are going to come out with it with a Giannis, which is, of course, fantastic. And, of course, you can get a Galaxy Opal Brand Roy at the end of it as well. So, I don't know, it's a tough one. It depends if you want to put the time and effort into it, especially with these new cards coming out right now. Next up, Cole says, I just pulled Galaxy Apple Bird. Should I sell him now or wait later for his price to go up? I would say sell now. I don't think he's going to go up too much in price because, like I said, there's a lot of competition around that same position. And then the final comment for this first video of the day is going to be from Bobby, who uh, has his name in Mandarin, and he says, oh, I've called, it's Bobby again, just in case you found it hard to read Mandarin. Funnily enough, I did find it hard to read Mandarin, because I can't meet, read Mandarin, so thank you for giving me uh, an English name. So, Bobby, I felt anxious that I bought Galaxy Opal Larry Bird for 250k. Is that possible that I can make some MT and sell him off this weekend? Definitely, you're going to make profit on him. 250k is a very, very good price to pay. As we just saw, one was selling there for two, uh, 330k, and I definitely think they will start selling for over 300k on the regular, so you will make a bit of profit. So that's going to be it for the first video of the day, guys. Those spotlight cards, I'm so, so happy that 2K have done something like that. There's a lot of content to get through. 
Uh, we're not going to be one of the first ones to get it. I know literally everyone at the moment is streaming it. If you go onto YouTube, there's like five people doing live streams of them going for this. I'm not fussed in the slightest about being the first one to get it done, but I will go through at my own pace, and eventually we will get that Galaxy Opal James Harden added to the squad. So let me know down below what player you're going to be going for first. Like I said, the first one of me is definitely going to be Galaxy Opal. Galaxy Opal. Wow. Diamond Cam Reddish. And that's just actually made me realise, have the Hawks players gone up even higher because... That card is so damn good. Uh, and DeAndre Bembry right here, 9K, 8.9K, 8.5K, 8.38K. 8K for a silver. 7.8, oh my god. Okay, so I'm going to get my Hawks card sold very quickly. Uh, and same, oh no, we've locked in the Hawks heat check. Oh, that really hurts. Oh, I bet they're so expensive right now. They are. Oh, that one hurts the soul a little bit. So I am going to go through uh, and see who the... Most desirable players are going to be, like I said, that Cam Reddish was number one on my list. So I'll go through the other teams that have the most desirable players and then get them sold first off. And then, yeah, Galaxy Opal, Evo, Ben Simmons will be done in the second video of the day. Very exciting. So that's going to be it. As usual, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.